I'm Brittany Lewis, a breaking news reporter here at Forbes. Joining me now is Senator Ed Markey. Senator, in the wake of the school shooting in Nashville last week that killed three children and three adults, you, along with Representatives Alyssa Slotkin, Mark DeCano, and Marilyn Strickland, reintroduced the Gun Violence Prevention Research Act. Can you tell us about the legislation? Well, research is medicine's field of dreams from which we harvest the findings. Uh, that can help to prevent harm to Americans. And so for 20 years, the Centers for Disease Control was prohibited from doing research on the causes of gun violence in our country. Over the last three years, I've been able to secure $100 million to do research at, at the uh, CDC. Uh, so that all across our country right now, researchers are doing that work. So what we did was we reintroduced legislation last week to add $50 million a year for the next five years to continue this research so that we can put in place the preventative measures that reduce dramatically uh, the number of gun fatalities and gun injuries in our country. It's the worst uh, in the industrialized world uh, but if we do the research, we can do the prevention to reduce that number significantly. What exactly does that research look like? Well, the research uh, would uh, would be sent out to uh, uh, to uh, places like Johns Hopkins, which right now has a grant, uh, and others who look at uh, behavioral uh, medicine related issues, but also um, they, they look at the impact on veterans. They look at the impact on young people uh, in terms of what can be done in order to reduce uh, the um, use of guns that uh, lead to serious injury or death in our country. It, it's the largest um, uh, cause of suicide that people use uh, guns. And, uh, and we, can, uh, we can do additional research uh, towards um, trying to reduce that number. And let's say if I, this legislation's passed, five years go on, what exactly would legislation come out of that research? Or what exactly would the findings of that research, what would you do with them? Well, that would be the goal, that, um, that we spend $50 million a year for five years a piece, and then out of that we get the findings, and then we begin to pass legislation. Uh, that can put the preventative measures in place in our country. Uh, but without the research, without the documentation, without the scientific reassurance that this is the right thing to do, it just makes it more difficult to pass uh, comprehensive needed legislation. So I think this is going to go a long way uh, towards uh, removing a lot of the obstacles that have existed in the past. and. and uh, uh, and especially those arguments that are just red herrings, spurious um, uh, objections, so that we can uh, wind up with meaningful legislation passing on the floor of the House and Senate and signed by a president of the United States. Can you dive a little deeper? What do you think those red herrings are? Well, the, the red herrings um, would, uh, would be those that basically were saying uh, that this is not uh, a um, uh, this is not a behavioral uh, health set of issues. That this is not preventable. Uh, that we uh, are just engaging in uh, speculative research. But at the same time, why were they so intent? You know, 20 years ago, in passing legislation to prohibit research at the CDC. Obviously, uh, the NRA is very concerned. Uh, that these findings could actually lead to legislation passing uh, uh, in uh, in all areas of American society uh, that our strategy, a comprehensive strategy to reduce dramatically the impacts of gun violence.